Hello once again and welcome to the program Lessons from the Word. Yes, Lessons from God's Holy Word. On this program, we only give you lessons from the Bible. Today, we're going to be looking at the remnant and its mission. Wow, that's one of those big topics out there. We're going to look in the book of Revelation. We're going to be all through the Bible, actually. Joining me today, we have Elder Clayton Forbes from the Saddleville Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we're going to be looking at the remnant and its mission, Elder Clayton. Why not say a word of prayer uh, before we begin this yes. program? Father in heaven, oh God, we thank you for this opportunity to delve into your word. And we ask your Holy Spirit to guide us and instruct us. And oh Father, even as we uh, discuss, may your name be lifted up and you glorified. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to read the introduction to the remnant and its mission found in the book 28, Fundamental Beliefs. The universal church is composed of all who truly believe in Christ. But the last days, but in the last days, a time of widespread apostasy, a remnant has been called to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The remnant announced the arrival of the judgment hour, proclaims salvation through Christ, and heralds the approach of his second coming. The proclamation symbolized by the three angels of Revelation 14, it coincides with the work of judgment in heaven and results in a work of repentance and reform on earth. Ella, that says a lot. I want to take a word out of there and let's just jump at it right now. Apostasy. Right, uh, apostasy, well, first of all, what it means, it means the people who, in layman's term, go astray. Uh, God has set certain principles, certain rules and guidelines that he expects his children to follow. Uh, invariably, and throughout the Bible, the children of God have always apostatized, have always gone astray. Why? So it's, it's, it's a, just a matter of uh, God saying, uh, behave. And they behave for a minute, and then they misbehave. And then he tries to bring them back to himself. And if you look through the whole uh, thread, thread of the Bible, you will find that it's just a, a whole history of going astray, getting back in line. Going astray, getting back in line. Warning after warning after warning, and the people coming back in, in line with what God's commandments are. So this is not anything new because you said it's all through the Bible. We, we can remember even with Moses and the commandments. Yes. The people, while Moses was up there, the people did their own thing. Right. Right? While he was up there with God, uh, going through what should be and being presented with the Ten Commandments. Remember how he ended up flying in anger. Yes. And it's all because of apostasy, right? Yes. Uh, you will find, um, and this whole thing ties into the Greek controversy, because you asked why. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's, there's the... Satan and his imps who are there to prove that God's laws are not just, they're not fair, they can't be kept. Uh, that's his whole job, what he does all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, God is, is just, and he's proving that through us and our actions. And even, you went to Moses, but even in Genesis it started. Uh, mm -hmm. They were put placed in the Garden of Eden, a perfect place, everything was perfect, everything was fine, with the exception of Lucifer. And God gave them one paramount thing you can eat of all the trees in the garden but this one and invariably they ended up eating from that tree that's apostatizing okay and that's what they did and so god set in, in motion right from then mm -hmm. uh he had it in his mind and in his heart and his head and in place before even mm -hmm. sin took place but he set it in motion mm -hmm. and he talked about you know uh, you you bruise the serpent heel and he will crush your head and there will be a uh, send someone or someone will come and pay the price for sin and so all of this was planned long before so okay. God had everything in motion mm -hmm. but even from the garden of eden apostatized and then you went on to uh, after that, you know, Cain killed Abel and right. apostatized. Mm -hmm. And Seth came along and the children of Seth and everybody got uh, got to the place where we, we, we went to know and the whole world was a mess. And 
uh, got to the point where God had to clean that up. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, gave them 120 years of opportunity to come into the ark, but of course, only eight went in, longest campaign, but, you know, <laughs> uh, eight people went into the ark, and uh, God cleaned that up. And then, Noah, uh, after Noah, you know, you went into the children of Israel, Joseph, Jacob, uh, in, in Egypt, and 400 years of slavery, yes. and on and on and on it goes. And uh, it got right up to the end time where here we are apostatizing again. I mean, this has been the trend, mm -hmm. the human trend. Yeah. With, uh, and so God is always trying to bring us back from apostasy, back online. But he's always had a remnant. That's he's the next word I was coming to. Mm -hmm. His people mm -hmm. that he had in place to bring us back in line or to help us bring focus. People he would speak to to help bring the masses back in mm -hmm. line. God is forever, and his people uh, will never be extinguished or uh, removed from the face of this planet. He always has a remnant. Okay, so you brought up my next word, remnant. Mm. What is a remnant? Right, now, a uh, remnant is all English. Well, I guess it was way before <laughs> that, but I mean, uh, they used to use it a lot uh, in, in old English. Uh, it's just the leftover from something. Mm -hmm. Basically, if okay. you want to put it in the simplest term, it's just left over. But so it's, it's a small piece. It's a small piece of a whole, uh, and uh, people used to refer to this bolt of cloth thing, where you know, because uh, a lot of people are seamstress and they understood it. My mother was a seamstress. Right, and, the remnants. Uh, you would go to a store and buy, and you'd say, "I love this piece," and you went back and say, "You know, you have any more of this?" Mm -hmm. You showed them the little piece you have, and she said, "Well, only a remnant we have left." You know, it's just a part, a small part of a whole that's left over. But okay. the thing about the remnant is, it is identical to the first piece. Okay. The quality is not diminished. Mm -hmm. uh, the consistency is there. Uh, it's exactly like the first piece that started. And I think that's one of the points in God using remnant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because he's saying, we've come a long way, a lot has happened, and a lot has changed among my people. Mm -hmm. And it's hard even to see the image of God that I put in man. Mm -hmm. But I always will have a remnant who would just like the people I started out with. Okay. All right. So it says here, the remnant announces the arrival of the judgment hour, proclaims salvation, and heralds the approach of a second event, second advent. Yes. How? Uh, the thing with apostasy is you can forget who God is mm -hmm. you can forget what his plan is mm -hmm. and you can forget the direction you're supposed to be headed in okay the remnant are supposed to be a church that God has in the last days that works against apostasy to remind people of God's plan uh, uh, God said when he was leaving if I go I will return mm -hmm. and people forget that mm -hmm. so uh, a part of the job of the remnant is to remind people not only is he coming again, it's imminent. It's coming soon. And so uh, that's their job to remind people of the second coming of Christ. Also the three angels' message. They're supposed to herald that. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to herald a warning to let people know, look, God is sewing things up. Get your house in order. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just a, a, a little summary of the three angels. So message. there's a warning in the three angels' message you're saying to us? Yes, there's a warning in the What's three angels' message. What's the warning? warning Help us angels. remember that warning. You know, um, as good pathfinders and master guides, we're supposed <laughs> to know the three angels' yeah. message or the third angels' message from here. Right, but right. you know, sometimes we get mixed up. I want to read just a portion, at least the first one. And I, I saw, saw another angel, angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred, tongue, and people. Is right. that really possible? Oh, uh, when he said it, I'm sure people didn't think it was possible. Even as a child, I was wondering how would that ever happen? Yeah. Uh, but today, we realize that it is not only possible, mm -hmm. it's happening. We have something called the internet that is here, mm -hmm. and it is traveling around the world. COVID-19 has made that even more mm -hmm. evident and possible, and we could see in the New York Minute, uh, apps are invented that facilitate the process mm -hmm. of 
the traveling with speed yes. of the gospel. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the three angels' message, the three angels are flying in the midst of heaven. Mm -hmm. the, the, the significance of them flying is it, it denotes speed. So this gospel is not only going to reach, it's going to reach fast. <coughs> and when we think about, when we think about how, uh, I remember when my wife was in college, mm -hmm. I wrote letters to her. <laughs> Okay. And with great anticipation, I knew it was coming and I waited. <laughs> You're talking about it like it's... A week and a half mm -hmm. before she would respond to me or even longer. And then we had telephone then. You know, I couldn't really afford those long calls. I only went on the phone with her one time and fell asleep and I, I was reluctant after that. But we wrote letters and they came back and for years that was the speed of our... Uh, sending messages and then the radio was invented and uh, now we have the internet and so things can happen so quickly. I can not only speak to uh, someone across the seas but I can visually see them. So uh, we have improvements in the telecommunication and the, the speed with which uh, messages can travel. So when you talk about the three angels message flying in the midst of heaven, mm -hmm. they're flying fast and furious and the message is going with that rapidity that causes it to reach the whole world in a, in a minute. Does that say to us then, because the message is going out there, that Jesus' return is nearer than it previously was? Well, it's nearer than it was yesterday. So <laughs> every, 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 day, day. every day that we live, it's mm -hmm. closer. And I know uh, some people say, oh, my great-grandfather used to say, you know, Jesus coming soon. And yeah, because Papa always used to say that. And, uh, you better, you, better, you better be ready. You better be ready. Yeah, some of us say the Lord, the life is coming. And, we don't, you know, everybody's been saying that ever since time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, but the thing is, when you die, Christ That's has come it. for you. Mm -hmm. And so it's eminent for you. Uh, Christ's second coming is as far away as your life uh, expanse is. So okay. when you die, you're in the grave and you're waiting until he comes. And next time you open your eye is what you're going to see. He's here. Okay. Or he's been gone here. Gone. Right. That's the part. Yeah, because you have to remember now there's two different there's two, resurrections. Two okay. So, uh, but when you wake, uh, the shock mm -hmm. of it is going to be real. Okay. Uh, one, either you're rising in the cloud, you say, he took me, mm -hmm. me with all my flaws. Mm -hmm. uh, or you're going to say, oh, Lord. I wish he had taken me. So the rapidity of the gospel is the thing, and technology has shown us. Uh, you could have something happen in the U.S. today. Mm -hmm. uh, I should say 9 o'clock in the morning, and by 9.15, persons on the other side of the world are aware, because it's instantaneous now, the speed with which news travels, especially bad news. Yes. But the good thing is the three angels are traveling with good news. Okay. Good news of the gospel. And the problem with good news is it's not as well received as bad news. Revelation 12, though, mm -hmm. it talks about this remnant. The faithful, the remnant are faithful to God's commandments. It reminds us the remnant have the testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy, and then Revelation 19 and 10 talks about um, the prophetic gift and all these things. Um, right. Do you, can we identify with such a grouping of people? Okay, so the, the thing about the remnant is God is saying there's going to be wide apostasy. Mm -hmm. Now we can tell that from the amount of churches we have. Uh, you, you try to say, okay, what is God's church? Hey, hey, Clayton, all of, sorry, Elder Forbes, all of us believe in one God. Yes. Come on, you're talking about the wide variety of churches? Right. Okay. So you have a whole lot or a litany of churches uh -huh. all saying I'm trying to different follow you. things mm -hmm. and all saying we worship the true God. I'm not even talking about those who aren't Christians. Right. No, 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 we ain't going there. No. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about the, about the uh, Christian Protestants even, mm -hmm. there are so many of them, it's... Ridiculous. So if you had to 
choose a church. You would spend a lifetime trying to identify and understand all of the philosophies of these church and, and the scriptural integrity of these churches. And by the time you figure out half of them, you probably would be an old man mm -hmm. and ready to cross over. So the thing is, uh, there's a widespread apostasy, mm -hmm. but God has simplified it for us. He says, there's going to be a remnant. These are the people you want to connect with. And they will have the faith of Jesus uh, and, and uh, the spirit of prophecy. Uh, and also they would obey the commandments. Okay. So he made it very simple for you to identify it. Now we could spend uh, forever trying to study the counterfeit like banks don't do. Right. They, study, they study the authentic. Mm -hmm. And anything that doesn't line up with the authentic, they kick out. Okay, good. So uh, the best thing for us to do is to study what God says is the authentic. Mm -hmm. And anything that doesn't fall in line with that, yeah, we just bypass that. Okay. And move to the church mm -hmm. that have the faith of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy, mm -hmm. and keep the commandments. Now you know you're in the remnant because those were the characteristics that he identified as his remnant church. This can get us into some... Hot water? I mean, scalding, boiling, Good hot company. water. Jesus was in hot water. All of the apostles were in hot water. Good uh -huh. men weed in hot water constantly. Okay. All right. Since you're not afraid to go there, I'm going to ask. At all. I'm going to ask the question then. <laughs> they proclaim we've already been there. Part of it, I re talked about the first piece of this message. They proclaim the message of the judgment hour in Revelation 6 to 12. Mm -hmm. And that ends with, and you talked about it, here, are the, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Right. <laughs> I said I'm going to ask, help me to understand, do we have such a people dwelling now, this remnant? Yeah, uh, the thing about it is, like I said earlier, God always has a remnant. Always. He's not going to tell you to look for something that it does not exist. Okay. Right? So uh, uh, I want to say, though, that the remnant is not perfect. You're not going to find a church full of saints in white robes with halos. Oh, no? Even among the remnant, you're going to find some struggles. You're going to find some issues and some challenges. Oh, but the thing is oh. that they understand the Word of God. They're living up to it as best they can. And the oh. principles they're following, okay. which is the faith of Jesus, the testimony or the, the spirit of prophecy okay. uh, and keeping the commandments. These things are critical. God Ooh. says, if they don't have those, keep looking. And he did that on purpose mm -hmm. so that we wouldn't get lost in the preponderance of churches that we have and the amount, the abundance of churches that we have. You can imagine you try to find your shoes. Uh, at an Indian function where everybody would take off their shoes before they go inside, and you all decided to wear similar shoes. Now you have to try on every one that's your size. But you know, if you had three markings that you put on your shoes, you know, it must be this okay. size. <laughs> it okay. It's slightly worn on that side, mm -hmm. and then it's easy for you to find your shoes. You just brush away the ones that don't fit, mm -hmm. and eventually you'll get there. Okay. So mm -hmm. w what God is saying is, I'm going to give you three qualities, at least okay. three, and it's more Help than three, us. you know, uh, so that you can identify the church, mm -hmm. you know, this church. Uh, the faith of Jesus, they must live like Jesus lived. So mm -hmm. all of the things that he stood by, he stood for, mm -hmm. and the principles that he lived by, this mm -hmm. church should have those. Okay. Right? Um, the spirit of prophecy or the testimony, mm -hmm. uh, this church should be about prophecy. Okay. This church should have a prophetic word. I want to stop you there. I know you're going to talk about your third one. You're mm -hmm. going to come to your third one. Mm -hmm. Prophecy, though. Um, don't we say that's outdated sometimes? Well, uh, Why don't we preach Jesus is coming instead some, of versus prophecy? Some prophecies are outdated. When you think about uh, uh, Daniel and those, and, and when Nebuchadnezzar had the dream, and uh, he was interpreting the dream. That was God's prophesying through Nebuchadnezzar of things that would happen, and Daniel explained it to him. Mm -hmm. That's a prophecy in the past. That's okay, not. all right. So 
uh, God was at that point mm -hmm. showing Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel, and people who were paying okay. attention All right. that I am God. Okay. I know the beginning from the end. I know okay. the future, mm -hmm. and I'm in control. I understand what's going to happen. Okay. And so there were prophecies that had a time. Oh, okay. End. All right. Mm -hmm. And then there were prophecies that have uh, last till the end of time. Okay. All so right. So some have a time end, some to the end of time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so he uses those prophecies to tell his people mm -hmm. what's going to happen for several reasons. One, you need to know that it is God mm -hmm. that you're working with. So you see things come to pass. And it gives you confidence that the God you serve is Amen. in control. Amen. And the God you serve is orchestrating things. So we see uh, things happen around us and chaos reign and fall. The, the man of God or the child of God is not supposed to be alarmed because God is in control. He okay. told us these things will happen. He told us a thousand will fall at our side and ten thousand at right hand, side. but it shall not come nigh the only behold. And he told us all these things. So... Uh, you could have this peace that passes understanding Amen. because you know that God is in control. And so the prophecies at the last time in the great apostasy when this world is chaos and most people wish that they could pass on because it just don't make sense anymore. Right. Um, you're steadied when you understand okay. the prophecy and the okay. word of God and you see, it. you see it coming to pass. You see the things he prophesied materializing, so you know that okay. God is still in control, right. and you have no need to worry and fear. Okay, so that's fair. And the third, the third one, the you third said one now. was that you have to keep the commandments. God's commandments were given, uh, uh, not on Mount Sinai. That wasn't the first time they existed. No, they existed no. long before mm -hmm. that. But he wrote them because he was taking the people out of slavery, 400 years of bondage, confusion with the Egyptians, and they didn't have a chance to worship God the way they should. Okay. And a lot of things he had to retell them. Mm -hmm. And he wrote them down. People's lifespan was shorter yeah. and people needed to remember. And then also uh, for, for us today, mm -hmm. they're there. So they don't change. And like I was saying about the remnant earlier, what existed initially is going to be the same people, that the same philosophy that exists towards the end. So God has a remnant people. He started with the commandments, and we're going to end with the commandments. So if you're wow. in an organization that does not keep the commandments or the commandments are not important, uh -huh. you need to check that organization because God wow. said this is, it's as simple the, as that. this is one of the identifying marks of my remnant church. You know, so that's, it's just that critical. I want to go to Second Peter chapter 3 as we bring this lesson to a close. Second Peter chapter 3, and I want to read verses 10 through 14. Mm. And it reads thus, But the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, right. in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and, and the earth. elements shall melt fervent. with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then and all these things shall be dissolved. What man of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall met with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Yeah. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be dil diligent, but ye may, that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot or blameless. Ella, the people of this remnant church are to proclaim the nearness of Christ's return. Right. This, sir, uh, is your opportunity to call someone to come out of like the second angel's message would have said. The second angel, yes, Babylon is fallen and it's telling people to come out of her. Right. You know, so let's call people to come to know this God and to be a part of this remnant that God has risen up. Right. Um, God wants to save everyone. And he wants to give everyone a chance uh, to repent and come to worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, the thing is, if you're not aware that events are happening, is going to cause you not to pay attention. But he wants us to understand the urgency 
of now. And so he's giving us warnings after warnings, letting us know that he is coming and he wants his people to be ready. And he wants uh, us to make every effort to prepare for his second coming. Um, just like in Noah's day, people he preached for 120 years. And uh, even though they didn't think it would happen, it seemed ridiculous the things that Noah was saying, uh, the urgency was there. Yeah, and God doesn't want anything to take us by surprise or anybody not to have an opportunity to prepare and be ready for Amen. when it comes. Amen. And so that's why he's saying to us, it's urgent. That's why the angels are flying. Speed. We need to do this quickly because yes. the time is short. Even the devil realizes the time. Is Even short. the devil realizes the time. <laughs> and so God is also intensifying and letting us know, Amen. get ready. Amen. I'm coming. Amen. Thank you very much, Elder. I end with this song. How sweet are the tidings that greet the pilgrim's heir as he wanders in exile from home. Soon, soon will the Savior in glory appear, and soon, and soon will the kingdom come. Hallelujah, amen, hallelujah again. Soon if faithful, we all shall be there. Oh, be watchful, be hopeful, be joyful till, till then, and a crown of bright glory we will wear. Brethren, let's all wear that crown. Let's look forward to Jesus' second return. Let's continue to study and get lessons from God's holy word.